In this video, I'll give a brief introduction to the maquiladora sector in Mexico. Let's start with a basic question. What is a maquiladora? Well, maquiladora is a Mexican plant that imports inputs from, say, the United States, processes them in a way that adds value, and then exports them back to the U.S. The inputs and machinery used in the manufacturing of these goods are allowed to be imported duty-free into Mexico. Typically, the U.S. will only levy tariffs on the value-added portion of the exported good. Under Mexican law, maquiladoras are allowed to be owned 100% by foreigners, although a percentage of the manufactured goods must be exported rather than sold in domestic markets. Why are they called maquiladoras? Well, the word maquiladora stems from an old Spanish word, maquila, which was a term for the amount millers would charge customers to process their grains. The U.S. and Mexico started the Bracero program in 1942, which allowed Mexicans to come legally to the U.S. to work in agriculture during World War II. By the early 1960s, though, U.S. labor unions were complaining about the increasing number of Mexicans and the competition for jobs that it was creating with American workers. The U.S. government bowed to the pressure and unilaterally ended the program. Partly in response, the Mexican government created the Border Industrialization Program in 1965 to stimulate growth in border cities and help ease unemployment issues for returning Mexicans who would be jobless. The idea was to create special economic zones that would allow foreign companies to engage in something called production sharing, where the inputs would come from elsewhere, but the processing of the good would be done in Mexico, where labor was cheap. The program also generated foreign exchange, that is, foreign currency, something that was much needed given the country's move from an export-oriented industrial strategy to one focused on building up domestic industry. Until 1972, maquiladoras had to be located within 20 kilometers of the U.S. border, and they had to export all of their goods. After 72, they were allowed to locate anywhere in the country. They were allowed to sell a percentage of their goods domestically. The majority of maquiladoras still concentrate in border cities, however, because of the geographic advantage of being so close to the U.S. market. The result would be a phenomenon called twin plants, where a multinational company would have its capital-intensive plant in a U.S. border city, say El Paso, while its labor-intensive plant would be located across the border in Mexico, in this case Ciudad Juarez. The maquiladora sector grew quickly in the 1980s and early 90s. For example, from 1980 to 1995, the number of maquiladora plants increased from 539 to more than 2,000. And the number of people employed in those plants went to 776,000, or 10% of the country's labor force. Miriam Louie notes that, quote, in 1985, maquiladoras overtook tourism as the largest source of foreign exchange, and that in 1996, it was the second largest industry behind oil. In a future video, we will study the effect of NAFTA on the maquiladora sector. Many of the privileges that maquiladoras received were then granted to non-maquiladoras, making it an interesting question what effect the trade agreement has had on man Mexican manufacturing in general and maquiladoras specifically. The quote I gave you from the previous slide was from a book called Sweatshop Warriors, Immigrant Women Workers Take on the Global Factory. The rest of the information in this video, though, comes from Joshua Cohen's 1994, The Rise of the Maquiladoras in Business Mexico.